Okay, guys. Uh, before we continue, I wanted to show you what I've done with my rig and uh, to talk about a potential problem that you might run out with uh, your own rig. Uh, if you're using my LT, you will notice quickly that in the constraint drop-down menu, you only have options for constraining rotation and position and perhaps the aim and the pole vector, but you don't have any way to constrain the scale. Now the regular Maya obviously has that constraint, a bunch of others you know, on top of that. Uh, why Autodesk decided that developers did not need a scale constraint is really beyond me, but uh, unfortunately there is very few ways you could actually constrain the scale aside from you know driven a few driven keys or uh, parenting. Now, if you can remember correctly, uh, the constraint parent did not scale, uh, did not constrain the scale. If you can take a look here, you've got the translate and the rotate, but no scale uh, value. However, the regular parenting uh, does indeed scale, uh, you know, constrain the scale to the uh, child. However, it, you know, most of the time, whenever you're making a rig, you really don't want to be using the parent per se. Obviously, it is part of your uh, rigging method, and it depends on a personal choice. Uh, but most of the time you don't want to give too much freedom to the actual rig. Uh, for example, if I parent something to the rig right now and I move the child, there's no way to go back unless I zero it out. Um, so what I wanted to show you is uh, what I would do in this situation right now. And if you had the same problem, you would use the parenting tool. Uh, I mean, the parenting um, uh, method or whatever. So I'm going to close the constraint window because I'm not going to use it. And I'm going to open the outliner. Before we uh, go into this, I just want to um, clear out what I've done here. I basically made a few text buttons, well, to a few texts, so to speak, and I've uh, put them in a controller group, which everything that is part of the controllers will be in this group, and the drivers, which are my clusters, my ICANN handles, all that, is in another group. This is only basically for having a cleaner scene. Uh, obviously, this is not really uh, that important in this situation because we have so few um, uh, elements here in the scene that we don't really need to go ahead and um, uh, clean it up but at the end of the day it's nice to have it all nice and clean okay uh, so what am I gonna do now ideally what I want to do is be able to grab this cluster I'm gonna open up the uh, show the joints as well is grab a cluster for example the cluster start which is our uh, first cluster that connects these two points and um, since we already have this, let me just show you what I need, what I mean by that. I'll pull, pull this up, and I'm going to grab this cluster here. And I'd like to not only pull it down, like I've already shown you before, but also scale it so that I can uh, modify the uh, um, location of these things. Now, in the Maya 2018, I believe, will have animation mirroring. And I think also Maya LT has animation mirroring here in 2017. But in any situation, obviously you could mirror this, right? You could go, there's many different approaches, right? I could move the root to the front and make one a regular IK handle, which would have been probably the easiest way to do this. But I just wanted to be thorough with my examples here. So I had my root in the middle. Um, now, what do you do when you want to uh, use your scale, uh, you know, in such a way? Uh, well, what you could do is always grab a particular controller, which would be my start here, which is my first. Uh, set of uh, vertices here on the left and the right. Also, this will save me some trouble mirroring, by the way. And I'm going to grab the start here. So in this situation, actually, I should have selected the start first and then the controller here at the end, which would be start over here. And I'm going to press P. This will parent these two suckers together, meaning that if I move this bit here, I will still get the, the desired outcome right however I can also scale it up and down the problem obviously with this setting and with this setup like I've already told you before with the constraints video is that um, I still I cannot like if I decide to move these somehow on my own right um, let me just grab the cluster itself here this cluster and I decide to move that I still can and you know this will change like this will this will remain a, um, a transform and in any situation you don't want that because you don't you can't zero it out effectively right because if we go ahead and take a look here at the channel box Jesus Christ this is always so fucking big it's ridiculous 
we take a look at the channel box, our controller right now has a zero value because I froze its transforms, right? You, once you have your controller particular position, you freeze its transforms and you know it's done and dusted. Um, obviously this is done after you position the pivot if you wanna be pivoting around, like you, you, you grab the transform, put it whenever. Uh, however, notice that I cannot zero this out now because you know these are zeroed. However, this is not zero. Now, obviously I could just go ahead and say, well, you know, I'm gonna translate this back to zero. It is entirely possible to do that. And in reality, I probably do not need these controls here. This is a little bit of an overkill for such a simple rig, uh, you know, the, the simple rig that it is right now in front of your eyes. But, you know, so that I can be th as thorough as possible, I just wanted to show you all the angles here. So I will solve this issue by parenting these, right? So I'm going to select my target, which is like the ch uh, my child first, and it will be uh, mid one, and I'm going to select mid one and press uh, P. I'm going to do the same for mid two, press P, and I'm going to do the same for cluster end, which would be for the end. I'm going to press P again. Now all of my um, objects are parented, right? However, I do notice a little bit of a problem here because for some strange reason, I believe I had a value that was not zero. Yes, for some reason group four, group four's value is not zero, but that is completely fine. Um, we'll sort this out later. Yeah, so this is minus 206 and this is 208, this is 206 well look for such small perturbations this is not really an issue but you really want everything to be zeroed out if i just zero this out right now i'll probably get some kind of a weird result here yeah but this is just the height of the object and you know it's not a big deal because we won't be dealing with that much height uh differences as much as we'll be dealing with left and right remember our player will be seeing this from this side right that's the only thing a player will be seeing so you know, it's not a big issue that, you know, we have a little bit of a deviation here from the zero um, value. Anyway, this is my rig done, right? Now I should have full control of my model. I'm gonna close this out and I'm gonna close this out here as well. And let's, let's just try this out real quick. Uh, lift this up and let's try to perform a some kind of a animation here well position try to position our object accordingly now obviously this is not even ideal to be honest because you know I have problems here in my um, um, you know with my uh, render view a uh, viewer because like I said you know this gets in the way but that's fine in our situation notice by the way the shape uh, this is a perfect example where let's say you could use this as a bow um, obviously this would be a little bit of an overkill for a bow you could probably you'd be better off using a deformer for it but it's entirely possible to use a rig for a bow like if someone shoots the bow uh, you'd get some kind of a you know once once they pull on it let's say this is your regular bow shape and then someone pulls on it and you would have some kind of a, a deformation here on the ends for example you grab let's say number four here and you deform it a little bit we drop it down and drop it up as well and there's your there's your bow being pulled and then obviously you 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 know you'd go back to zero which would be your default bow so this would be your zero uh, obviously we're not making a bow so uh, I'm not gonna uh, let me just go ahead and go back where I was we're not gonna do this with a bow like uh, situation but if I, if if I can hear see here anything everything really works as intended um, obviously this is not ideal so you know you'd, you'd have to go and you know twick around uh, play around with it a little bit uh, pull it together sort of like this and then go with number three pull this up and pull it together or extend it together something like this right um, it doesn't have to be perfect uh, like I said this is this is a very small animation and a lot you know, very few uh, players will actually notice a particular difference. Obviously, you can lift this up as well if you if you're not happy with a particular um, uh, position. Now, this rig is not ideal, right? There's definitely issues with it uh, where um, um, it's not as flexible. Okay, because I'm using I'm using scale to modify this. I cannot move individual vertices, and as such, I have a lot less freedom. Um, but it will get my job. It will get the job done for what I need, my particular needs. Um, so let's just go ahead 
I don't want to auto save right now. Uh, let's just go ahead and grab, let's say, the uh, mid here. I'll say, sorry, this is um, our uh, controller, yeah. And uh, pull it down as well a little bit and scale it out. You know, something like this. You, you, you play around with these values here until you're happy with a particular position, then you start animating. Um, but one last thing before we finish up and we go into retopologizing our mesh, because remember, this is a, just a skeleton. We don't have a mesh. Well, we do um, over here if we take a look at it, but it is very high poly count. Um, we've got you know thousands of polys in here, and this is definitely something we don't need. So we're going to have to simplify this mesh. Um, you know, we're obviously going to do it on one side and then mirror it. But what I want to show you is something very important. Uh, before I do that, I'm just going to zero everything out here. Zero, including the scale should be one. There we go. See, that's why that's that's the reason you make these controllers because you can zero them out. Whenever you go zero, it's your default bind position, whatever you, you like, use your rest position. Okay, so you 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 can't do that realistically on joints, especially on joints. Uh, obviously, with these cluster controls, you could zero them out because they're technically zero, right? Uh, it's just that you know control is a little bit easier to find out, at least uh, for my purposes. So as you can see, everything here really is very personalized, but one thing is important when it comes to your joint chain um, hierarchy. Actually, I don't know why I closed this outliner here. Um, now take a look that we've got a mid, a mid two, this and this, and controller, which would be our actual, we should probably rename this as center. Okay, so this is our center. Now. Let's say we're making an animation here and we, oh, by the way, one more thing. If I decide to move this from left to right, notice that my other controls are not moving, right? Which is a problem because if I go ahead and move this over here, my controls are gonna stay in the middle of nowhere and you know this is not a good, a good thing to do. Uh, we don't need to bother about these clusters here because um, you know it's completely fine. Uh, but what you wanna do is parent your uh, you know these you want to parent these to your uh, center joint which is be which is your root so I'm gonna parent this now when I move my center I move the whole thing right however because I parented them right because they're parented noted that notice that I have a problem right that's why you don't want to be parenting you want to be constraining your objects because this is what happens right uh, because in the hierarchy there there's no like their transforms get affected by your root. Now, luckily for us, I'm not gonna be uh, doing that, right? However, there's another issue here, okay? So, in my case, this is a really a non-desirable ev uh, event. However, if you have your transform, co if you have your constraints properly done, uh, you're not gonna have this problem. And essentially, this is how you have your, um, this is how you have your controllers follow your root. Um, now I'm gonna undo this because obviously this does not work for me. And then again, we're not gonna be, I'm not gonna be using root motion. In other words, I'm not gonna be moving my object left and right in order to perform a particular animation. Everything in the animation department and the movement department in the physical world, as in the virtual world, will be handled by the engine in Unreal. Which means that my uh, task here is only to make sure that I can have a visual effect of movement and not an actual effect of movement. In other words, if I, let's say, let's let me just create a, uh, I don't know, a cube here. I'm gonna move this here and just shade this over here, shade it nice and like this. And let's say this is a wall. Well, this is a little bit a little too big of a wall, but let's let's just assume that this is a wall and I'm gonna put this uh, somewhere over here, right? Um, now, if I am to animate, if I were to animate, let's say if I was animating something like a, uh, like a swordsman, like a swordsman or some heavy warrior type guy and he would be smashing with a hammer or lunging with a sword. Let's say I'm gonna try to stab, imagine this is a sword, I wanna stab, um, uh, you know, some, someone in front of me. I wanna create an animation for stabbing. Whenever I do this, I want my character to launch forward, right, and stab. However, if I just do this like that and I leave it there, the problem is that Unreal wouldn't really know that my object moved because the movement was not handled by Unreal, it was handled by an animation. 
meaning that we got a problem here because it is, for all intents and purposes, the object in the engine will remain here. It will not have moved according to it because everything, including collision, any, any, any calculation, any interaction between objects is usually calculated through a collider or through a trigger, okay, or through a ray trace or whatever. Now, probably I'm, I realize I'm probably talking in uh, some weird terms here, but just try to figure this out um, because this is usually best done in Maya first. Imagine that in the engine, in the engine, there will be a cylinder or a capsule or a cube, a box, anything that will surround our object, depending obviously on how accurate you want it to be. Now, for all intents and purposes, the visual representation of the object will have nothing to do with the actual understanding uh, the way the engine computes the object okay so in my situation if i were to drive something over here to the wall and if there was a bounding box of a cube here let's say um it will literally you won't see the cube but it will calculate as if i'm moving a cube it's just that it's shaped but like a worm however in reality it will be shaped like a cube and therefore the engine will be able to say okay listen there's a wall here and let's say the cube ends up somewhere here right and once i hit it and that's where the whole thing will stop however the problem is that the cube is not very accurate and i'm gonna have my geometry go through the wall not only that but the actual cube itself would not move it will stay where the object was uh, according to um, unreal engines uh, calculations right so what you want to do in any of these situations where you need to have an animation drive the movement and not the actual engine driving the movement of your object you need to have a root it's also called root motion the root is essentially a joint which is which is going to be staying at zero 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 and it's not going to be moving all right any animation that you make that involves movement um like let's say like a run or a lunge you're not going to be animating the root the root must always be at zero 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 okay so essentially the root will tell will tell um unreal that hey we're moving this whole object okay because the animation is we're moving forward or backwards and we need to move everything with it, right? Not just the visual representation of our object, which is the mesh, right? Not just the bones, which is part of the mesh, but also the collider, which will be attached to the mesh. And the collider is the bounding box or the, 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 the geometric shape that will interact with other objects. Because let's say this, have a cap, this has a capsule uh, collider and this, ha this is a cube collider, right? So at the end of the day, you're gonna have two cubes intersecting and then uh, the engine will know hey there was an animation and you know it hit it it hit the cube against the wall because the wall also has a collider and that's where we're going to stop we're not going to go through it because then it's going to be weird right if you got your geometry clipping through uh, the world geometry all right um obviously we don't need this for our current um model because at the end of the day i'm just delete this uh, because we're not going to be doing such movement. We've only been creating a simple walk cycle, so to speak. Let me just grab this thing and um, zero this out as well. Right. So I hope you understand what I'm saying. Uh, I, I know I wasn't very visual with it, but like if I created a cylinder, let me just go, go ahead and create a uh, cylinder here. And I'm just going to scale this out. This is how um, Unreal Engine will calculate our worm, okay? For all in intents and purposes, for Unreal Engine, this is our worm. This is the shape of our worm. Obviously, you could go and conform, right? You can tell you Unreal to uh, grab a collider that is exactly upon the shape of the worm. That's exactly what we're going to do because we have only two shapes. We have very little things to be calculated. Uh, however, these are very intensive, obviously. You don't want to be having too many of those in, in your scene. But what I'm trying to say is that if you have this wall here and you move our object, this is what's going to happen. The object moves, the animation plays, but the actual collider here, right, it stays, um, uh, it stays in the same place. So this is an issue, okay? That's why you want your root motion. That's why you want a joint in the, like at the, at the origin of your world parented to the rest of your skeleton. Let's say in our situation, our center is this joint right here if i could select it, it would be nice this joint right here and uh we would parent all of this to a single root 
over here to one joint in the middle. Now, from now on, this joint will not be touched, obviously, uh, because uh, we want the engine to be uh, working with it. But at the end of the day, this will enable us to create some more complex animations. Now, I don't know what you're doing um, because, you know, obviously chances are you may not be doing exactly the same thing that I'm doing. You're probably making your own little uh, game or your own thing. So, um, you know, there's no there's no need to uh, uh, everybody to do the exact same thing. I just wanted to show you that if you're doing something that involves movement that you are calculating, thinking to yourself, right, so my character will, will lunge forward and kick the guy and then backflip backwards, okay? We need to be able to grab that information off the kick, okay? And if there's a collider on your foot and your foot, you know, moves with the whole character, but the collider stays here, even though you're gonna kick visually, calculations are not gonna be performed on that because your collider will remain in the same place. That's why you need the root so that the root can move and then with the root moves everything and that's how unreal knows that you're moving the whole thing now um, this is a little bit too advanced anyway uh, because once you have usually you need these for bipeds for organics for something very fairly complex for animations that are not easy to make because like i said in our situation we just need to lift this and you know grab our <clears throat> uh, grab our uh, controllers here and just deform this in such a way that it's believable that it's moving okay and we're going to go into animation later but whenever you're making your rig you always want, especially the control rig right the, the rig itself is fine you can do whatever you want with the rig but the control rig is your basically your like your puppet strings okay when you're making a puppet your puppet strings you attach them in such a way that it's easier for you to control giving you as much flexibility as possible that's the same thing this is your control rig um like I said, in, in this situation, ignore. let's pretend that I have a much more complicated um, skeleton, right? Much more complicated joint chain with a lot of geometry in front of it, with a bunch of uh, clothes, let's say, or uh, some other stuff basically will get in the way, it will basically be a pain in the ass to grab these things. And let's say, imagine that I got like thousands of stuff on this outliner. And I've grouped them up here and the whole outliner is full. I'm going to have to search for them, etc. That's why you have a control rig, which enables you to control several objects in once, at once instead of just grabbing, let's say, oh, I'm going to grab this vertex, move it here, and I'm going to grab this vertex, move it here, and this vertex, move it here. It's going to be a pain in the ass. Therefore, whenever you're making your control rig, because this is, once you're done with that, you don't want to be revisiting this uh, stage, okay? Once you're done with your control rig, you want to be sure that you have every possibility for your needs covered right you don't want to be having to you don't want to have to unbind the skin and then maybe add a few joints or um i don't know like create a couple of more controllers and then get some constraints but then if you create something you can screw up your whole setup your previous setup you're gonna have to delete things and at that point things become very complicated and unnecessarily complicated because you'll be wasting a lot of time so make sure whenever you just approach your control rigs intelligently in such a way that they serve your purpose, right? Test your control rigs. If they serve your purposes, that is fine. Don't You don't have to go super ham as well. Obviously, I could go ahead and create, right? So I'm gonna have uh, you know, a control for every single vertex on this object here because let's say if I was going 3D and I was going like this or I wanted an extra layer of, um, if I wanted an extra layer of um, uh, flexibility, right? I would probably not use this setup because this is only useful for 2D symmetrical movements. Okay, let's say I wanted my worm to move to just lift this side, right? Uh, with this current rig, it is impossible because uh, this uses, this controls both of the control vertices. Um, obviously, I also use uh, apparently the CVs instead of the uh, uh, EP, EPs, which are your curve points. Remember the control vertices on the curve uh, are not the same as the actual as actual points on the curve. They're just guidelines where the curve is calculated along. And then, you know, the calculation method, you define this when creating the curve. In our situation, it's a cubic uh, calculation, but you can have logarithmics like the uh, linear, uh, et cetera. There's different calculations. You've, you've seen them. I've, I've explained them in the uh, curves video. So that's all, I just, that's all I wanted to tell you guys. Before you finish up with your rig, make sure that it works in the intended manner all right no need to bind your skin just yet just make sure that you can whatever it is you envisioned doing with your model that you can 
And if you can, then you're done and we can go on to the next step, which is retopologizing and binding our skin. I'm gonna save here, by the way. I probably shouldn't have denied that bit. Uh, once we bind our skin, uh, we will use these controls here to manipulate it. All right. Um, in the next video, we're going to start retopologizing, and after we retopologize, we're going to bind the, the skin to the mesh, uh, bind the um, the joint chain to the mesh. We're going to paint the weights, right? And once we're done skinning it, I'm going to talk about animation and how animation works, so that we can animate our object. And after that, we'll be done. We can export. Or maybe we'll do some UVs. I'm not sure. Uh, I still don't know which would be best. I mean, ideally, you'd want to get your UVs done after that, uh, before you bind, right? You want to have your UVs done after you read apologize. So we'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens. I don't know yet uh, what the whole approach is going to be. But at the end of the day, we're not going to be texturing. But UVs are required for texture. And I'm going to talk about this uh, in a few videos about uh, high polys and low polys and normal maps and all, all those other types of maps because there's loads of maps out there. Uh, and for me, it was very confusing, right? Well, what's a normal map? What's an occlusion map? What's a bump map? Right? What's a, what's a what texture map? All, they, all them maps. Um, so uh, we're going to have to talk about UVs uh, a little bit later because, like I said, it, I think I'm going to have to visually show you as in not in the software, but as in visual with some tin foil, <laughs> because UVs it's 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 a little bit interesting, but uh, you'll see when it come when the time comes. All right, okay, so that's it for this video, guys. I just showed you what I've done, uh, and this will serve the per my purposes excellently. Obviously, I could go ahead and hide these C's um, if I go into show here and just remove the joints. Uh, obviously, I don't need these anymore because I got your controls here. My controls are done. So I could technically hide them. And let's go ahead and just hide them because I really don't need them. And for some reason, this created a group uh, for my cluster, which I don't know why, but I you know, might as well leave it there. So I'm going to go ahead and select these. I'm going to hide them. There we go. They're hidden. That's not to say that they're not <clears throat> operational. I can still move stuff around with it. Right, uh, they're not just gonna—they're just not gonna get in my way. Even though they're just small, tiny C's, and you know, I can't imagine them getting in my way as it is. Right, I'm gonna put the joints back on. I'm gonna hide my outliner, save the the scene, and I'll see you guys in the next video when we start actually retopologizing our um, geometry. Not geometry, but uh, player character. And actually, before I finish this video, one more thing: you always, almost always, want to have several rare layers of stuff on your, um, you know, for your rendering port. So if I go ahead and create a new layer, I'm gonna actually create two new layers. And what I'm gonna do here, instead of going into show right and pick what I want, which is entirely a legit way of doing things, um, I'm gonna open my outliner here. Jesus Christ, what is wrong with Maya? Come on, keep the damn thing in place. Wow. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, right, so I'm going to go ahead and grab the uh, controller bits here, and I'm just going to add this whole thing to my layer. Add selection to the object, and I'm going to say these are my controllers. And I'm going to say that they're going to be green. They're going to be green. No, I already have something green. Yeah, 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 controller, find controller layer. And I'm gonna make this fine red because we already have green. It's a little bit intrusive, but it'll have to do. These are my controls here. Now notice I can hide them immediately. Boom, oops, boom, All right? No controllers, all controllers, no controllers. Uh, this is handy because I can, you know, it's easy, a lot easier than just trying to hide curves or show curves, etc. So uh, m much easier this way. And for the second layer, I'm gonna go ahead and put my joints there. So I'm gonna select the whole skeleton, I'm gonna add this, add selection to this layer here, and then I'm, I can hide the joints as well. That is, of course, not to say that I can't do this from the show window, but it is something that is useful, all right? Um, by the way, one more thing. You ideally wanna have a scale, um, you wanna have a scaling uh, controller here at the end of the day for our situation we don't need a scaling controller but if you were to ever scale your object because um, look what's look what's going to happen if i scale this nothing okay because this is not 
parented. There's no scale constraint here. So you're going to need to create something that can scale the skeleton. So if I grab this and I scale it, then I get this, you know, the scale in the distance, but not all of it. So I need, I need to grab the whole thing. If I select the hierarchy and now I scale it, then I get a full scale of the object. So you need to have some kind of an overarching controller that could scale everything at the same time. So that if you decide, well, listen, this, this worm is not big enough. I'm going to have to scale this myself, but then because we parented our, um, because we parented our controllers in the non-traditional way, you're going to have problems. So in my situation, I really don't want to be scaling this up, at least at this stage, um, because my whole setup is going to break, right? Uh, ideally, I'd want to be using some driven keys or some kind of, some way to bypass this lack of scale or have a more granular control. But like I've already said, um, I think this would work just fine for uh, my purposes. Um, but that's it. Yeah. So I'm going to call this, I'm going to call this skeleton and I'm going to make this blue or not blue. Uh, let's make this uh, yellow, let's save this. And I'm going to grab the whole skeleton here. I'm going to add this to my, um, layer. This way I have full control of my object and Jesus Christ, this is so annoying. I'm starting to regret my choice of uh, ditching the hotkeys for opening stuff up. Uh, so there we go. We can hide this. We can hide this. And now we go. We only have our player. And we can start working on our player. If we go and make this into a uh, reference, right? And we start snapping onto it without selecting it. Um, obviously, we're going to do this in the next video. Okay. All right, guys. I'll see you then. Um, play around with your control rig, make sure that it operates correctly, right? Make sure that whatever you were deciding to do, you can do, all right? Because if you don't, and then when you bind the skin and it turns out that you don't have the control that you need, you might actually be kind of screwed, all right? And in, in terms of uh, your time being wasted. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.